Hello and welcome back to our channel with a new video. Today we will discuss everything there is to know about osteoporosis. So without further ado, let's start with today's video. What is osteoporosis? The term osteoporosis literally means porous bone. It's a bone weakening illness that puts you at a higher risk for unexpected bone fractures if you have it. Osteoporosis is defined as a loss of bone mass and strength. The disease frequently progresses without causing any signs of discomfort, and it isn't detected until the weakening bones result in severe fractures. The majority of these are hip, wrist, and spine fractures. What are the symptoms of osteoporosis? Osteoporosis usually causes no symptoms. It's for this reason that it's sometimes referred to as a quiet sickness. However, there are a few factors to be aware of. Loss of height, getting shorter by an inch or more. Change in posture, stooping or bending forward. Shortness of breath, smaller lung capacity due to compressed or smaller chest cage. Bone fractures. Pain in the lower back. What are the chances getting osteoporosis? As bones gradually thin with age, the chance of developing osteoporosis rises. After 30, the rate at which bone tissue dissolves and is absorbed by the body gradually increases, while the pace at which bone tissue is built gradually decreases. After the age of 30, you lose a modest amount of bone each year. Bone loss is more rapid in women and commonly begins after monthly menstrual periods end, when a woman's estrogen production slows down, usually between the ages of 45 and 55. At around 45 to 50 years of age, a man's bone thinning commonly occurs gradually as his testosterone production declines. Women's bones are often smaller and lighter than men's. As a result, women are significantly more likely than men to acquire osteoporosis. Osteoporosis usually does not affect people until they are 60 years old or later. The thickness of a person's bones, bone density, in early life, and health, food, and physical activity later in life determine whether or not they develop osteoporosis. Factors that increase the risk for osteoporosis in both men and women include having an osteoporosis family history. You are more likely to develop osteoporosis if your mother, father, or sibling has been diagnosed with the disease or has broken bones from a minor injury. Factors related to one's way of life. These are some of them. Smoking. Smokers lose bone density more quickly than non-smokers. Use of alcoholic beverages. Heavy drinking can lead to a reduction in bone growth and an increase in the risk of falling. Men who consume more than two drinks per day and women who consume more than one drink per day are considered heavy drinkers. Exercising infrequently or not at all. Walking, running, stair climbing, dancing, or lifting weights are all weight-bearing workouts that maintain bones strong and healthy by exerting the muscles and bones against gravity. Exercise can help you maintain your balance and reduce your chance of falling. Being small-framed or thin. Osteoporosis is more common in thin people and those with petite frames. Overweight women, on the other hand, are at risk for additional major medical disorders such as type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and coronary artery disease CAD. A diet lacking in calcium and vitamin D-rich foods. Having several medical issues. Hyperthyroidism and hyperparathyroidism are two medical diseases that increase your risk of osteoporosis. Taking specific medications. Bone weakening can be caused by a variety of medications, including long-term usage of corticosteroids. Having specific procedures done before menopause, such as having your ovaries removed. If I have osteoporosis, how can I avoid or minimize the risk of having a fracture? If you have poor balance and low baseline mobility, using a walking device such as a walker or, at the very least, a cane is the safest approach to avoid falling. At the end of the day, age is only a number. Thus if you know you have difficulty walking, while having osteoporosis, regardless of your numerical age, 
there is no harm in using walking aids to ensure a safe walk. Using a cane is far preferable to undergoing fracture fixing surgery in the hospital. A safe home setting is also crucial, with an excellent bedroom slash bathroom configuration and quick access to your home. Would osteoporosis affect my elective orthopedic surgery? Yes, even if you've never had a fracture before. Your elective joint replacement surgery will be harmed if you have osteoporosis. According to some research, if you have a shoulder arthroplasty, your odds of suffering a periprosthetic fracture, a fracture around the implant, within the first two years are higher than if you don't have osteoporosis. Similar evidence supports your lower extremity arthroplasty, total hip and total knee replacements. How is osteoporosis diagnosed and evaluated? Your doctor will most likely do a bone density scan to diagnose osteoporosis, estimate your risk of fracture, and determine whether you require treatment. This test is performed to determine the density of your bones BMD. Dual Energy X-ray Absorptiometry DXA or DEXA, or bone densitometry are the most prevalent methods. The DXA equipment measures the number of X-rays received by tissues and bone and connects it with bone mineral density. The DXA equipment calculates your T and Z scores based on your bone density. The T-score is used to predict your risk of fracture and the necessity for medication therapy by comparing your bone density to an average population of younger people. Your Z-score indicates how much bone you have in relation to others your age. This number can help show whether there is a need for further medical tests. The following procedures can be performed to determine bone fractures due to osteoporosis. Bone X-rays produce images of bones throughout the body, such as the hand, wrist, arm, elbow, shoulder, foot, ankle, leg, shin, knee, thigh, hip, pelvis, and spine. It helps to diagnose fractured bones, which can occur as a result of osteoporosis. CT scan of the spine. A CT scan of the spine is used to check for fractures and alignment. It can be used to assess bone density and predict the likelihood of vertebral fractures. Magnetic resonance imaging MRI, of the spine can be used to analyze vertebral fractures for signs of underlying diseases, such as malignancy, and determine whether the fracture is old or fresh. How might osteoporosis be treated? There are many FDA-approved medications to choose from for the treatment of osteoporosis, including bisphosphonates, calcitonin, hormone therapy, rank ligand inhibitor, selective estrogen receptor modulators, CIRMS, parathyroid hormone analog. A prescription is required for these medications, and medical evaluation is required before treatment. Osteoporosis can result in compression fractures in the vertebra. Most of these fractures can be treated with observation, medical management, and bracing. In certain circumstances, intervention may be required. This can be managed by kyphoplasty. A balloon is injected through a needle into the cracked bone to create a cavity in kyphoplasty. Following the removal of the balloon, a cement mixture is injected into the cavity. Surgical decompression and stabilization may be indicated in some compression fracture cases, especially if your spinal canal is severely narrowed, unstable spine, or progressive neurologic deficit. Other osteoporotic fractures can be treated surgically or non-surgically according to the affected body part. In conclusion, osteoporosis is a common ailment that affects people all over the world. It may be unnoticed until the first fracture occurs. The idea is to determine which category you fall into and then change your risk variables to reduce or eliminate the risk. Osteoporosis is best treated by preventing it. And the earlier a patient is diagnosed and treated, the better the outcome. Well, that's all for now. Still need more info to know about osteoporosis? Check out the links in the description box below to learn more about our resources and other helpful materials related to osteoporosis. And if you thought this video was helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. And let us know your views about this video. Thanks, guys.